worldwide economy. Why not? So that's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like the video. And uh, if you haven't sub subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Maybe just the top three economies. Let's look at that because everything trickles down from there. So we'll do that. The top three and uh, see how uh, that plays out. Here's some wiki stuff and then the cards. So the world economy or the global economy is the economy of all humans of the world. The global economic system, including all economic activities conducted within and between nations, including production, consumption, economic management, uh, both in general, um, work in general, exchange of financial values, and trade of goods and services. It's common to limit questions of the world economy exclusively to human uh, economic activity, human economic activity, and judged in monetary terms even when any data or government cooperation makes establishing figures uh, difficult. Typical examples of, uh, of what might be difficult are uh, illicit drugs, um, black market goods, but they're all still part of the world economy. Now, local currencies are typically translated to a single monetary unit. Worldwide economic activity may be expressed in terms of real United States dollars or euros, but could be evaluated and expressed in many more uh, different ways. So according to Madison, I don't know who Madison is, I should have looked that up too late now, but according to, to Madison, until the middle of the 19th century, global output was dominated by China and India. Waves of industrial uh, revolution in Western Europe and in Northern America shifted the shares to the Western uh, Hemisphere. And then as of 2022, the following 18 countries or collectives have reached an economy of at least uh, U.S. dollars, two trillion by GDP in nominal terms, terms, and those would be Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Spain, Turkey, and the United Kingdom, and the United States, and the European Union. So the World Bank predicted that the global ec economy would decrease by 5.2% in 2020. Let's see what the cards can tell us. The global economy. So what's going to come of this question? You know, I, I choose these cards at random. And um, so I don't go through typically and try to decide on a specific deck for a specific question. I've come to a point where I just kind of pick out uh, some cards. Oh, I think I've got something upside down here. You know, uh, I can't have that. So we're going to go back through it. But I just pick out some decks and then hope that when it comes time to do the, and I'm just flipping through the cards down here, hope that uh, when the time comes uh, for me to do the readings, that the cards are appropriate to that. Now, it's interesting that we're talking about the global economy. Uh, China is a global giant, and uh, these global these uh, Chinese cards uh, happen to be the ones that turn up for this uh, reading. Maybe there's not, oh yeah, right there. See, that lovers was inverted, which I don't care for inverted cards. And the reason being is I don't trust my intuition uh, uh, for the uh, interpretation of the inverted cards. So I try to make sure that I'm uh, giving you readings that I feel comfortable with uh, my interpretations. And if, after all that diligence, the cards still come out as inverted, then I know that they really wanted to be read that way, and that's how I have to deal with them. But in this case, I had uh, one inverted card, and we corrected that. And so now we'll see the global economy. So what can the cards tell us about the global economy? And it's very interesting, like I said, that at random, this uh, Chinese tarot uh, deck uh, is the one uh, that uh, we come to. But first, before we do too much, let's have just a minute of meditation. Okay. Just a minute. That's all we need. I do a, 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 a nice uh, meditation before I start to work with the cards. And I call on uh, a few different entities uh, to help guide me through that, including some uh, loved ones who have passed uh, over. 
So let's see what the cards can tell us about the global economy. Six cards to start with. Two, three, four, five, and six. I've been having trouble with my glasses falling down a lot. I guess I need to go get them tightened up uh, so they don't slide down my nose quite so easily. But anyway, the global economy signifier card. Okay, this is the Nine of Swords. You know, the Nine of Swords is um, typically a nightmare. Okay, and this kind of shows in this card. So you get Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. That's how what they mean to me. And uh, so this uh, Nine of Swords is just showing uh, what uh, almost an embattlement, what a challenge it is for this person to fend off uh, all of these uh, issues of what? Truth, justice, rules, and law. And we're talking about the global economy. Truth, justice, rules, law, global economy. It fits. Signifier card. The challenge to that then are the lovers. Well, that's interesting. So yeah, this makes sense. This is major arcana. This is kind of you know, uh, not very far along the fool's journey as being number six, uh, the sixth stop in his journey. But the lovers tells us that, yeah, we need to find true partnerships that are meaningful to us, that are lasting to us. So the challenge to this nightmare of all this uh, truth, justice, rules, and law is finding that true, uh, perfect match that we all need. The base of this reading, then, the emperor. So this is very interesting. So the emperor is the, again, major arcana. And uh, this is the card that's going to tell us that um, uh, the, what the emperor has decided is going to be the rule. That's what's going to be the rule. We're talking about a global economy. I wonder if this, the base of this reading is, th is this telling us that there may be some uh, standout leader in the uh, world superpower. I, who is, are the superpowers now? Is it just the United States? Is it China and the U.S.? The past of this reading then with this four of coins and the coins of value worth and the four of coins is talking about holding on to your value pegging it down make sure that you keep track of it and you and you have it solidly uh underfoot so the past of this reading though in this reading on the global economy is that four of coins having that uh, value under your foot and that's in the past the sky of this reading uh is justice perfect you know, what we have to have uh, for all of the economies to work and to thrive and to produce for everybody is fair and equal justice somehow. The likely outcome of the first part of this reading from the global economy is the Page of Swords. And like I always say, of course, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law, Page is the very weakest of the court cards. And so the likely outcome of this is that there will be a... a, a um, a beginning message, an emerging message of those things, truth, justice, rules, and law. So we're at that point. The last four cards for this reading, I'm going to give it, I think, one shuffle for the global economy. And the very signifier of that question about what's going on with the global economy, well, look at this Ten of Cups. Ten of uh, Cups is happy family. Okay, it's um, it's a celebration. The cups are emotional, compassionate. So that's a very good signifier when we're talking about the global economy to get a card that uh, represents, you know, happy generational um, satisfaction with the emotional issue that it is. The um, environment that that's in, however, is the page of coins. Small message of value. It's in the environment of a small message of value. Interesting. The hopes and the fears for all of this with this five of coins is, oh, I forgot what the five of coins is. Five of coins. Let me use this card to pry out. Five, coins, of course, or value. The five of coins is almost at a changing point, a place where you realize that uh, we're not at the solid place of a four of coins. We haven't made it up to the six of coins, but we're at this place where we're worried about and our hopes and fears that we uh, uh, navigate this uh, five of pentacles kind of a, a situation that we find ourselves in. And then the, the uh, final outcome for all of this for the global economy is the three of uh, uh, wands. And the three of wands is long-term planning. That's what we want to find here. We want to make sure that whatever we've done for the global economy, that the long-term planning is the key to everything. So just to start out again, the signifier card of the reading for the global economy, Nine of Swords, it's a nightmare. The uh, challenge to that, of course, is are the lovers finding that perfect pairing, those perfect uh, 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 balances uh, for all of that. The, set, the base of this reading with the emperor is telling us that, you know, what 
is uh, the emperor does is he's in charge. What he says goes. And it's interesting that I get the emperor and, a, and these Chinese uh, tarot cards ended up as the ones being used for this reading. And then we have an emperor here. The uh, past of this reading with the four of coins is finding a solid uh, footing to hold on to your value. And then in the sky, it's all ruled by justice. You know, finding the true justice of the matter. Uh, then the uh, final outcome for the first part of this with this page of swords is just a message of truth, justice, rules, and law. Then with the Ten of Cups, we're talking about, you know, a happy family, emotional, compassionate uh, situations for, um, uh, for moving forward and in a productive way. And then the environment that that's in with this page of coins is just a message of the value that's involved. Oh, this is being left out in the cold. So the hopes and the fears of that is that we don't leave anyone out in the cold, is that we encompass everyone who needs to benefit from the global value. There will some who will be left out in the cold. They always are. Uh, and those are opportunities for growth. That's why we have hardship. And then the uh, final outcome for the whole thing is this three of uh, wands reminding us that it's long-term planning that's going to make the difference in all of this. So global economy, just a roadmap. No matter what, um, everything you know survives. Everything comes back in another way. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Chinese tarot deck by, I don't know how to pronounce this, We. Gulang. Perhaps you can see it there and make your own determination as to how to pronounce it. But this is by U.S. Games Systems. And uh, I've had these cards for a bit and I've been uh, playing with them. And so I thought I'd just uh, show you uh, what we've got here. So they come in just a typical, uh, you know, little box. It's not anything to speak of, really. And um, the um, the inserts in here are, again, what you typically find with cards. And the, the deck, the uh, instruction pamphlet, is just uh, a typical little uh, instruction pamphlet with the typical uh, suggestions in one language as to how to divide the cards. So, there. And, um, but the cards themselves are pretty Cool. I've enjoyed using them, and they're not hard to uh, interpret. Now, this is a really neat design on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a warrior here with their hands outstretched, and then all this going on, and another warrior upside down here. So that's the back, but then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're good size, and uh, the art is interesting, and they're very easy to read, uh, even though they don't have the typical little uh, signals that uh, a lot of cards give you as to what this means and what that means, and you know, you know what I mean? So there we go. So this is the uh, the Chinese tarot deck. And, you know, I like to spread them out like this for two reasons. One, if you're working with somebody, you can let them uh, kind of spread them out this way if they're not com comfortable with shuffling and you really want them to get involved with all the cards. And two, um, you know, when I was just uh, looking at uh, readers online, I always wondered, what does the rest of the deck look like besides what I got to see in just this short little presentation? So this is the Chinese tarot deck, and I like them. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.